Good morning. morning. And welcome to Life in Christ Lutheran Church. Good morning to you who are joining us online, and good morning to our deaf friends as well who are with us this morning. Uh, We continue in the second, uh, as we get into the second Sunday of Advent in our worship this morning. Uh, If you haven't already done so, there's a white card like this uh, in the seat back in front of you. Please take a moment to fill that out and and, uh, drop it in uh, one of our plates in the the back. We are glad that you are here. Um, As we gather this morning... This red letter thing. Have you ever? Uh, how how many of you have a red letter Bible? Yeah, yeah, most of you. I loved having a red letter Bible growing up because it was quite clear uh, in Sunday school as to whether or not Jesus actually said these words because it was in red. Uh, if he did, uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, but anyway. Um, I, I'm just thinking back to a, a number of discussions that, that we had in our Sunday school class with other students in the class. Did Jesus really say, yeah, it's in the red letters? Of course, he said it, yeah. Uh, but for many Christian people, reading the word of our Lord from a red letter uh, edition of the Bible is a blessing because it just kind of takes the guesswork away. Uh, it's, it's right there in red. Uh, seeing those words highlighted in a special color uh, can make them seem more immediate and more noticeable, which is why they do it. Uh, the last sentence with red words in one of those Bible editions is uh, taken from Revelation chapter 2, uh, verse 20, in which our Lord ends his speaking with a promise, Surely I am coming soon. And it's, it's one of those things that Jesus says to St. John as uh, in that whole encounter as St. John records the, the revelation. And, and John responds to it. And he says, Amen, or yes, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Those words, they become part of the worship life uh, for many in the early church, and they're our words too, our sentiments as well, as we expectantly await uh, the return of the Lord to earth and the completion of His promised eternal kingdom. And so, uh, in the season of Advent, we echo those words today. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Let's rise as we begin our worship with Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty.
God has called us here to worship this morning, and so we begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me, heard my cry. O God, our Father, you have set forth the way of life for us in your beloved Son. We confess with shame our slowness to learn of him, our failure to follow him, and our reluctance to bear the cross. Have mercy on us, O God. According to your steadfast love, we acknowledge our sinful nature and confess our sinful thoughts, words, and deeds. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Friends in Christ, upon this, your confession, by the command of our Lord, I, a called and ordained servant of Christ, forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in his peace. Amen. We continue with the intro. It. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered, O offspring of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is He remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Friends in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be, we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We continue in song as we light the candles on our advent.
congregation, please be seated. We continue with our Old Testament lesson this morning. Morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 11. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal for the peoples. Of him shall the nations inquire, and his, rest place, and his resting place shall be glorious. The epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 15. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again it is said, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come, even though he who arises to rule the Gentiles, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, out of honor for Jesus, who is the Christ, we rise for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance." Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, 
God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise we continue in song, the congregation may be seated. One more time, the words of the hymn, we hail thee, Jesus, as our Savior, Lord, our refuge and our great reward. Without his grace, we waste away like flowers that wither and decay. Thank God we have an endless supply of that grace, huh? That's a beautiful thing. Let's pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, for indeed you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we encounter our epistle lesson this morning, we are uh, exposed to a theme that's actually woven throughout all of the scriptures, but certainly in this section of Romans chapter 15, the theme is hope. It's good for us to be reminded that when St. Paul talks about hope, as he does in our epistle lesson this morning, he does so in a peculiar way, with an expectation that whatever it is he's hoping for is going to come to fruition. Not like buying a lottery ticket where you hope you win something but you probably won't. 
but rather the expectation that, that what you have hoped for is going to happen because you have placed your hope in a person, in particular Jesus. And we often describe this kind of hope using two words, now, well actually three, now and not yet. For example, God promises that we have salvation and eternal life now, even though we are not yet experiencing them in the same way that those who have gone before us are. Is they reside in the glory, full, unmitigated glory of God. But one day we will. That's the hope that we have, rather expectation that we have in Christ Jesus. Paul talks this way in our epistle lesson this morning, and he begins chapter 15, encouraging the Christians in Rome to, to be active in that hope. Build one another up in Christ Jesus. And, and maybe we could hear the echo of Jesus' words from the Gospel of Matthew as he says, Seek first the, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, not particularly in our gospel lesson this morning but but certainly in Matthew's gospel and we want to seek God's kingdom first with our lives don't we good Walter does yeah yeah we all do we all do St. Paul encourages us to encourages us this morning to do this by by loving and serving our neighbor, being active in our faith to, to bear the weaknesses of our brothers and sisters in Christ rather than please ourselves and, and make ourselves comfortable, but to walk with those who are around us. And the goal here is certainly for us to live and grow together in Christ Jesus, that, that we would be empowered and equipped to live our faith in Him, encouraging and reaching others. Where have we heard that before? In reality, it truly is a great plan that God has put in place for His church. That it would operate in unity, that it would grow and reach those who are weak and, and share with them uh, God's grace in Christ Jesus, a grace and a mercy that makes them strong. Like so many things in life, we are confronted with our shortcomings over and over and over again. Sometimes we fail to communicate well. We don't always walk in unity with one another. We lack the ability to seek first the kingdom of God as we should. And it's not that we don't try hard enough, although sometimes that's an issue, I guess. It's a flaw in our person. It's sin actively at work in us to keep us from being the people that God has created us to be. It's something foreign that we can't even detect or take care of on our own. This is why Confession and absolution are such an important act of uh, aspect of our worship service. As the writer of Hebrews tells us, we have an opportunity in confession and absolution to throw off that sin that, that so easily entangles us. And we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses as we do it. Brothers and sisters in Christ who, who walk alongside us, with us, encouraging us, and, and they know what it's like to wrestle with sin. Because guess what? We're all sinners. We know what that's like. And John the Baptist calls us in our gospel lesson this morning to repent. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, what does that mean that it's at hand? It means that it's here, right here with us. 
time is now. We get to celebrate the Prince of Peace and his coming into the world in which we live is the answer to every deficit in us. All of the pain, all of the suffering, all of the mistakes, the birth of our Lord and Savior, we celebrate because He is our rescue. And isn't it interesting that we're directed right back once again to the scriptures that were written for our teaching, our catechesis, our formation in Christ Jesus. And the Greek word here is didaskaleon, that, that teaching, uh, catechism. Isn't that interesting? Catechism. So often it's seen as a hurdle into uh, that coming of age of, of confirmation, but it really is an ongoing process that we learn something new each and every day. And it's key that we consider the scriptures this way because God's grace is endless. There's always something new to learn. There's always something new to experience. A new way to see God's hand at work in our lives. Because the scriptures are this way. They truly are the living word of God. Active in the world in which we live. And St. Paul tells us this morning that the scriptures themselves are sent to us by God. And the Greek word here again is paric is from the word paraclete, which is the same word used in John's gospel as Jesus talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And what's significant about all of this is that Paul is telling us that the Holy Spirit is at work in these scriptures. To encourage us, to, to grow us, shape us, and mold us into the body of Christ. And as a result, we who are many, we who were once cut off from the people of God because of our sin and God himself... We who struggle with relationships and choices that, that we've made in the past and things that have happened to us in the past uh, and maybe even in the present. We are being brought into the family of God, certainly, but even uh, more important than that, or at least just as important, we're being brought into unity and concord with one another. And St. Paul says it this way in verse 15. He says, May the God of endurance and encouragement give to you the same thing, to act as this many. One. According to Christ Jesus, so that together you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ with one voice. One voice. What an incredible goal. That people like you and I who, who rebel against our creator in our sin would be brought together as one body. Not to rebel or war, but to give glory to God. For his grace that never ends. How amazing would it be to have people like you and I from, from all over the globe spanning generations of time to come together with one voice praising God with all that we say and all that we do. Wouldn't that be amazing? How wonderful would it be to have people with brokenness in their lives or, or maybe even broken people all together as heralds for the Prince of Peace. Wouldn't that be amazing? The same Lamb of God who has come to pick up the pieces and restore what was lost as He takes away the sin of the world. 
removing it as far as the east is removed from the west. Friends in Christ, that's what happens every single time we encounter the forgiveness of our sins. That's what God is doing every single time we encounter the forgiveness of our sins. That's what God is accomplishing as he paracletes or sends the Holy Spirit to us to shape, mold, and build us into one body of Christ in this location. He's the one at work in the water of our baptism as we are reminded of our identity as the children of God. He is the one who is nurturing and growing us as he feeds us the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which he's going to do this morning in just a few moments. He's the one who feeds us with those scriptures of old. The living word of God, which in in a very miraculous way is new every morning. He is the one who opens our lips so that our mouths would declare his praise. Your sins are forgiven. What a wonderful message that we have to proclaim because of Jesus. And as we prepare our Christmas celebration this week, focusing on hope, rather the expectation of what God has promised, we hear John the Baptist calling us to repent of our sins and receive God's grace and forgiveness as we continue to grow in one mind as the body of Christ. And Paul directs us as well to to welcome one another as Christ has welcomed us for the glory of God. He's the one who has become a servant, fulfilling the law on your behalf and mine, that he would be the one to fulfill the promises of God for you and for me. This fulfillment not only gives Israel reason to sing, but in Christ the promises are open to the nations, the Gentiles, the outsiders, all to the glory of God. That's what we look forward to as we prepare to celebrate Christmas. Not something that's done by us, but something that's done in us. Something that's done for us. Something that's done to us. The Christ child, the the babe of Bethlehem comes to you and I to accomplish this very thing in us. And what's so amazing about Paul's message in our epistle lesson this morning is that Christ, in Christ, all of this is fulfilled in you and I. Even though we don't yet see it in its completed form. We're saved, even though we still struggle with sin in our life. We have the gift of eternal life, even though we're not yet experiencing it in all of its fullness. We are one in Christ Jesus now, even though we still endure the occasional conflict. Although this is how our lives are lived, we have hope, rather the expectation... That he who has begun a good work in us will carry it on to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he will. And with that promise comes a peace that passes human understanding. That guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus until the day of his return. We're finished products still in progress. May God grant it. Amen. As we continue in our worship this morning, uh, we've been taking a look. uh, Well, last week we started with the first article of the Creed. Today we'll continue with the second article 
of the Apostles' Creed. Let's rise and confess our common Christian faith, uh, particularly focusing on that second article of the Creed. Um, echoing the proclamation of John the Baptist, we confess Jesus to be our Savior, the one who fulfills all of God's promises for us. We confess. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own, and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. As we continue in our worship this morning, we worship God with our tithes and our offerings. God, our Heavenly Father, you provide us daily bread even before we ask. You uphold us perfectly in your grace and in your mercy. And as we worship you with our tithes and our offerings, we know that we are giving just a portion of, of what you graciously provide. But Lord, we ask that what we bring would be pleasing in your sight. Use it to accomplish your good and gracious will in the world in which we live. All to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends in Christ, let us join our hearts and our voices in prayer as we pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Come, O Lord, among us that as people united in faith we may witness to the good news that is ours in Christ Jesus. With hope we pray. Come, O Lord, with your presence on earth, that in those places where strife and discord rule, there would be times of peace. Come to our nation, that we find joy in that which is done through it by the leaders and by the people. With hope we pray. Amen. Come, O Lord, and walk beside us, that your love and blessing would be evident in all that we say and do. With hope we pray. Come, O Lord, and bring your response to the special concerns that are on our hearts, including health and family needs and, and situations that are a part of life. Lord, we pray for each person on our 516 list, those who are struggling with long-term illness and, and those who are struggling with short-term illness, those who are wrestling with grief especially those that are near and dear to us that we name silently on our hearts before you. 
With hope we pray. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. For all those who have completed their earthly journey in faith and now rest from their labors in eternal peace and joy, serving as witnesses of your never-ending care, we bless you, O Lord, and we ask that we also be numbered with the saints in glory everlasting. With hope we pray. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are blessed this morning in this meal to have a foretaste of the feast to come as God's promises are not only pronounced upon us, but he himself comes to us in, with, and under these everyday elements of, of bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our soul that that we would abide in his grace and grow in hope and expectation uh, of what he has promised. Friends in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We thank you for having sent your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to be our Redeemer, saving us from the power of sin, death, and the devil, and blessing our lives with a lasting peace. Invited by your grace, we come to your table expectantly and hopefully with gratitude and joy. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood that we grow as people of faith and peace, awaiting with hope the eternal feast and glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to all of them to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the only Son of the Father. In giving us your body and your blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and to confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, and power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Congregation, please be seated. We'll invite you forward in just a moment.
Let us rise for prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for having welcomed us at your table, giving us a foretaste of the feast to come in your eternal kingdom. Strengthen us through this blessed gift that we may live in hope-filled anticipation of the end of all earthly things and await with joy your final coming in glory. Grant that your Holy Spirit enlighten us with his gifts that we may be kept in the true faith until the last and greatest day of our Lord's return. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant to you his peace. Amen. Amen. We close our worship this morning in song. From heaven above to earth I come. Congregation, please be seated for just a couple of moments before uh, we head out this morning. Um, there he is in the narthex. If you haven't already picked it up, pick it up before you leave. Our announcement packet talks about everything that's going on at Life in Christ. Uh, one of the things that I want to call to your attention, our Tuesday morning Bible class has uh, decided to take a break for the next couple of weeks, and we'll pick that up in the new year. Uh, but all of our other uh, information will, uh, is in there. Excuse me. All of our other um, Bible class information is in there, uh, including uh, Pastor Anderson is uh, leading his Bible class here in just a few moments up in room 23. And Dennis, I believe, is going to be uh, up in 25. So grab a cup of coffee and a donut and head on up. <laughs> Um, and those are two good opportunities to uh, dig deeper into the word. Um, we got a couple of slides. One of them, uh, actually two of them are coming up for just next week. This one uh, is of particular interest because it's cookies. Cookies are good. Um, our youth are going to do a cookie walk and bake sale. Last year that, that was quite a hit. Uh, people like to give cookies. People like to get cookies. And sometimes uh, baking all of those dozens of cookies is, is quite, a, quite a chore. And so let us do that baking for you. Uh, come uh, next Sunday and there will be plenty of cookies available for, uh, for the fundraiser. And uh, proceeds go certainly uh, to the ministry here at Life in Christ, but also to help our youth get ready for the next uh, youth gathering in a couple of years. So we kind of want to make this kind of a yearly thing. Uh, so hopefully you'll find some good stuff there. Soup is going to be available as well. Uh, so if you 8 o'clockers leave and come back, uh, there will be plenty to eat. Jonah, come on up. Uh, Jonah's got an announcement for our kids' night out. Hi, everyone. 
How's it going? So, uh, with this holiday season, things have been crazy busy, and uh, after having multiple conversations with a few of our parents and a few of our families, uh, unfortunately, we are going to have to cancel our Kids Night Out program. Um, there's just a lot of things going on, and a lot of families have a lot of things uh, to do. Um, and so, with that being said, we're going to put a pin in this, in this program, and we're going to save it for another time uh, when things kind of settle in a little bit. Uh, with that being said, I want to thank all the families who have shown interest. I want to thank all of the volunteers uh, who have dedicated their time and volunteered their time for this. Uh, you have the night off now. Congratulations. Uh, you're welcome. Um, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, this is the decision that we've decided to make. Um, so there will not be anything this Friday. Uh, we will be looking to reschedule uh, the Christmas program practice in its stead. Um, and we're still looking for that date as well. So uh, if you're a family and you intend to be at our Christmas program, be ready for an email from me about a replacement date. So that is all on that. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jonah. Um, and also, too, last but certainly not least, one week from today is our voters meeting. Uh, Sunday, December 13th, 12-15, uh, we're going to be voting on a slate of officers in our 2023 budget. Uh, that budget is, is still available out in the narthex if you want to pick that up. You're pointing to something, Connie. 11. 11. Oh, 11. <laughs> oh, not the 13th. If you come on the 13th, you'll be the only one here. I'm sorry, my bad. Um, come on the 11th. That's one week from today, 12-15. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. I think that concludes all of our announcements. Oh, Wednesday, we have our midweek services, Advent uh, midweek uh, at noon and 7, the 7 o'clock service, of course, will be preceded by uh, soup supper uh, and, and fixes of that sort. So come join us for that. Okay, go in peace. Serve the Lord with gladness. Thanks be to God. Have a great week in Christ.